In the last video, we covered the basic positions of the legs in the duck walk and penetration knee step. Now let's talk about some of the muscle groups involved in achieving these positions. Building from the ground up, the toes in an extended position requires that the intrinsic foot muscles, the foot muscles on the underside of the foot, are lengthened. But at the same time, those muscles are contracting enough or resisting more lengthening so as to push against the ground and essentially support the entire body weight. Ankle dorsiflexion requires that the calf muscles are lengthened. That's the gastrocnemius, soleus, and we could even mention the often forgotten plantaris muscle. With the knee in the flex position, the quads or quadriceps muscles are lengthened. You can see this clearly here because the quads attach to the tibia through the patella or kneecap and the ligament or tendon, depending on how you define it, that goes from patella to tibia is more rigid than the quads. And so the patella follows along with the tibia in knee flexion and travels further away from the femur as the quads lengthen. Essentially, both of these movements have a component of back straightening constantly during the duck walk and intermittently during the penetration knee step. This straight position requires an upright pelvis. The gluteus maximus and hamstrings are lengthened based on the position of the hip. However, they are still contracting enough to resist the pelvis falling forward by pulling on the ischial tuberosities and the ilia. When the pelvis is stable, the back muscles can then hold the back upright. We get a similar effect in front where, because of the hip joint's position, we can say that the hip flexors are shorter, and these will help the pelvis and lumbar spine from falling backwards. And much like the back muscles, the abdominal muscles will stabilize the thorax in front. Come back for part three, and we'll talk about some integration.